welcome into 670 the score and welcome in the big ticket kevin garnett first off welcome home to chicago how you guys doing thank you thank doing you doing great you? well I would be remiss if I didn't bring up how I covered high school basketball here in the Chicagoland area. And the amount of times that I've talked about Kevin Garnett and his highlights just in all of my shows, uh, you really give a lot of credit to playing in Chicagoland, playing at Farragut High School. How did playing in Chicago really give you that competitive edge, that grit that you needed while playing then in the NBA? Uh, well, first off, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, playing at Farragut was was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me as a young person um, because it not only taught me how to um, – I already had a work ethic when I got to Farragut. Farragut was working totally different. I like to think that Wolf and a bunch of the coaching staff, uh, Eskridge and a lot of those guys over there uh, pushed me and actually grew me. Uh, as a basketball player and then helped me become a young man off the floor to be able to make tough decisions and be in positions to where I can speak up for myself and be educated on certain issues to be able to um, handle my own business, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, I, I was um, in the midst of growing up when I came to Farragut and they helped me uh, grow up as a young man and prepare myself to be able to go to the NBA early. At what point did you realize these aren't just college scouts looking at me and my practices and my games as a, as a high school athlete, but it was NBA scouts as well? Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a little bit of a rarity. You know, when I would go play at some of the uh, places to play around here with the Paul on the north side, I would go uh, Kennedy King on the south side, Malcolm X on the west side, De La Salle and a lot of stuff that was on the south side. Um, pretty much wherever we played, that was organized, I would, I would have small uh, groups of scouts, whether they were college, whether it was uh, pro scouts, uh, international scouts that were looking for talent. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know that that was a rarity. I just, I just looked up and at some point started to get used to people being in the gym watching, started getting used, getting used to people, you know, either being fans or whatever they were, and just thought that that was just a process. But um, yeah, I had a very different high school experience and playing in Chicago made it uh, a thousand times more electric. You know, um, it's a lot of talent in the city. You can you, you can play. I was able to play a bunch of uh, really, really good uh, players. And I thought that, you know, that talent pool here actually helped me gain confidence to be able to go into the league early. Well, you're a household name here in Chicago and kind of sticking with the Chicago theme here. Um, I cover the Chicago Bulls for BetMGM. Now, we know this past season they lost in the, the play-in round. We have a lot of injured players here and there. If you were running the Chicago Bulls, what would you make, what adjustments would you make during this offseason to help them, you know, push forward and win a championship? <clears throat> well, first off, I love the Bulls. I actually thought that uh, I, I know people have short memories, but when y'all had Lions on ball, Caruso, y'all had Debo, y'all had Zach Levine, and y'all had uh, Big Nurture in the middle, man, it was a very, very, very uh, Big Vooch in the middle, excuse me. Uh, y'all yeah, had a very, very, very good, very good team. I actually like that team. I think I think uh, Lonzo coming back, I hope uh, his health is better to be able to help the Bulls, but you guys have a really, really nice nucleus. I don't know if you guys can keep it together. <laughs> eager to know what uh, Debo's moves are, but if y'all can just, you know, talent-wise, uh, Kobe White had a great season this year. He played unbelievably. Um, you know, just this, this, this is a league of, of talent. You know, if you can actually add uh, talent to this Bulls team, who's to say they can't be like the like the Young Magic or some of these younger teams that are coming up, you know? Um, they're, they're just as competitive. I think y'all core has been together for about four or five years now, three or four years or something like that, like, you know? Um, yeah. But, you know, injuries, injuries is always a big part of professional sports. We, it's like the one mystery or the one question mark that you can never account for. Uh, Zach Levine is one of my young fellas. He's, he came under my, uh, under my arm. That's, that's my young guy. Uh, he's a great guy, great character in person, very hardworking. And uh, I look forward to big things from him. But, yeah, it's always the, the question mark of can you put talent around uh, this group of guys that's here to be able to uh, compete against the Eastern Conference. You know, you got Giannis and Dame up in Milwaukee. You got, uh, obviously, uh, New York and different teams in the East. The East is wide open. And um, if you can uh, put your team together and have it be 
you know, nine, ten deep with some talent, man, you can you can actually do something. So that'll probably be the first thing I do is uh, stack this thing with with. with so. I like your take there, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Garnett and M. BetMGM ambassador. Now, I want to ask you quickly about the Minnesota Timberwolves and Anthony Edwards. He's been in the conversation lately being compared to the likes of Michael Jordan. Now, what is your take on that? I kicked that off, man. You know, when I was watching Anthony Edwards in the summer, man, I was watching him train. And if anybody understands when you are making the jump of what we call the leap, you know, you'll start to see it first off in people's training. And when I was uh, just tapping in with the USA basketball, I was just, hey, who's having a good camp and whatever, whatever. And everything I was I was hearing coming out of there was, hey, this young kid, Anthony Edwards, this young kid, Anthony Edwards, he stays in here. He's in here first. He's been working his butt off. He's he's by far the best player, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? At some point, I know that's going to translate. So that was just me, you know, obviously observing and looking at him and how he was how he was attacking defenses and his intent and comparing it to what I saw in the early Michael Jordan when he was young, unpolished, and still trying to figure himself out. You know, uh, Anthony Edwards is probably the best two guard in our league, hands down. You know, uh, he's probably the biggest presence in our league, hands down. He's probably one of the biggest alphas in our league, you know, and um, he's gaining respect. And, not, you know, <clears throat> when you are gaining respect the way he is, People don't put the face in the league on you if you're not that guy. And I think that he's in positions to be up next. And um, I think it's great for, you know, it being a, a year of the Olympics and having an American player, you know, be from here and be from Georgia and represent it the way he repping it. Uh, he's, he's bringing another level of excitement to the league that we haven't seen in a long time. So that's, that's kind of what I was talking about with Michael Jordan's uh, – uh, inserts into the league and how he just electrified crowds. Anthony Edwards has that same dynamic with him on both ends of the floor. Yeah, Anthony Edwards, possibly the upcoming face of the NBA. Now, Kevin, I would be remiss if I also didn't ask this. Now, Celtics, Timberwolves, say they're in the finals. Who is Kevin Garnett rooting for, and who does Kevin Garnett think is going to win it all? So the way the Celtics are playing, I just see them as a steamroll. You know, they have a very – very unique team with depth. Um, I don't think that they've been really challenged this whole time, but they've been, they've weathered storms and they've been through the thick and the fire. So I like to think that their young guys are, you know, a lot more experienced, obviously. But I said this earlier that the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Boston Celtics were actually able to meet in the finals. I think the I think that I think the obvious is there is that the Celtics has been to the finals before they have the experience. But the way Anthony Anthony Edwards is playing and the way his dominance is carrying the Minnesota Timberwolves, you can't you can't even account for anything. I mean, I would say the Celtics, but I can't even say that with Ant and the way he plays. And when Ant and Cat and those guys are on top of the tier, they can beat anybody in the league. So it, it'll be a it'll. I think it'll go to seven games, and I would think that experience at the end of the day would, would play a factor, but I can't even say that. Well, that would be a phenomenal matchup. Maybe we can speak this into existence for you, of course, as well. Kevin, thank you so much for joining win us. Win for me, by the way. That will be a yes, win. Yes, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us here on 670 The Score, and welcome back home to Chicago. Enjoy. Thank you. I appreciate you. All the best to you. Thank you.